This is a video tutorial to walk you through how to do your documentation in PDF form instead of paper like you did for the 1604. So if you're watching this, you're probably getting ready to do it for the 8 bus project, but you'll do it for several other projects while you're here. So it's important to learn how to do it and how to do it quickly so that you can get through it easily. Um, so I'm going to use the 8 bus ones as the uh, example. So I just grab these off the server under resources and uh, recall documentation. Um, so let's take a look at the first one. So we're just going to double click it to open it in preview. If it opens in Adobe, you can right click and open with preview. Okay, so the first thing to look at is how to add text. All the tools that you're going to be using are under tools and annotate. So let's go ahead and do the text tool. Okay, and that's going to add a little text box right here. We're going to move that up. And one of the nice things is for this top part, you can fill it out for in one box for all of it, and then you can copy and paste this to every page. So let's just put the date in. So we'll say 6815, and then we can just space over and put in a producer name. Uh, if you guys are you know, recording something that you made up, then you could put one of your own names as the producer. So just put whatever. Um, enter. So it's going to move it down a line, so we can just shift this down. If you're in, I think, uh, 12 point, 11 point font lines up pretty well, actually. If your text is centered at first, you can go in here under the little A and change it to left, and that'll make it a little easier. Yeah, 11 point works pretty well for this. So Studio will say 8 bus, and we can just space over to Engineer, and I'll just put my name. Uh, other Engineer, uh, let's just say I'm doing this one by myself, so I'm going to put NA, space down again, and we'll just move it down again so it lines up. Session, let's say 8 bus project. Okay. And now the nice thing is you can just click on that, Command C for copy, Command V for paste. So you can just do that for all the pages that you use, just going copy paste. So the next thing that you're probably going to use pretty frequently is uh, the shape tools. So there's a couple ways you can do it. You can either do the shapes that are built in like this. The only problem with those is when you uh, Click them, they're just going to give you a giant one and you'd have to resize it every time. So let's say, for example, um, let's say this is our mixing session, so we wanted to circle mixing. You know, you'd have to do that on every page. And again, you could copy and paste it, and that's going to work. Uh, what I would recommend is using the pencil tool for these things. So let's say these uh, we're mixing, so all of our channels are in left, right, mix, so we can just draw a circle right there. Circle there. And if it's close enough to the right shape, it's going to correct it into that shape anyways, which is really nice. So you can just do that over and over again without having to go back and click and add a circle every time. You can also use that to draw the marks on the uh, knobs, and it's just going to draw a straight line, so something like that. And let's say this one was all the way left, and this one was all the way right. And you know, with these, you know, we could say the auxes were turned up a little like this, and then these two were turned down. You know, so you could just draw your lines that way. Um, and then again, if you you know you can copy and paste stuff around. So one of the other ways, instead of copying and pasting, you can hold options. So say you had, um, let's look at our EQ. Let's say you didn't use the um, the high shelf and low shelf. Let's say that you wanna all these are gonna be the same. All your uh, high shelf. Let's say you didn't use those. So we're just gonna draw a straight line at Unity. And now um, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit with two fingers, just like that, like you would on your phone. Take it off the drawing tool, and now we can hold Option, and you can just drag it over. Oops! If you grab that little um, circle there, it's gonna. Yeah, you gotta make sure you're using the hand tool. That's why we zoomed in. So you can just drag them around. As long as you're holding Option when you click, you can drag and copy them over. That way, you don't have to draw it eight times. You can just copy it over like that. Cool. And then outboard really works the same way. You just uh, you know make your marks on here or and or fill it out down here. And same with these. You just fill out the top part and then add your tracks there, uh, song structure, session log, patch bay. Main thing with all these, again, just like when you did on paper, is to make sure everything is filled out. So don't leave any of this stuff at the top blank on any of the pages. Make sure you pay attention to how these work. So like on patch bay, make sure you're doing your from to to, not backwards. So that means this should be output and this should be input. Um, the reason there's two of each on most of these is because one is for recording and one is for mixing. So make sure you're paying attention and make sure you do it for both. 
uh, you know, for example, if you used patch bay to cross patch or to compress on the way in while you were recording, you'd do that on one patch bay sheet, and then you do another that's for mixing where you did your time based effects, your compression, post tape, all that stuff. Uh, same with session log, make sure all this is filled out. So, instrument is just the sound source, whether it's a voice or any kind of instrument or whatever. Microphone is obviously what mic you used. Mic technique is how you mic'd it. So, you know, for example, if it's like two mics, you could say space, pair, X, Y. If it's just one mic and you're aiming it directly at the source, like an amp or a voice, you call that just close miking. Um, mic line is to say which where you plugged it into the wall in the, in the live room. Preamp is what preamp you use. So 99% of the time you're going to be in the 8-bus, for example, you're going to use the 8-bus preamp unless you patch it through somewhere else. Um, insert, whether you have anything on the insert while you're recording, uh, what channel on the board it's going to, what bus it's you're using to go to tape, and then what track in Pro Tools you're sending it to. So that way you can keep track of everything. And the reason we do these is so you can go back and say, oh man, I really like the way that snare sound turned out. Okay, here's the mic I used, here's the technique I used, the, what preamp, what I had insert, if I had a compressor on it, what channel, everything so you can recreate that exactly if you wanted to. Um, so. Just like always, the documentation is really important because that's going to show us what you did. The documentation is a screenshot of what you actually did on the project. So if it's not on the documentation, you can consider it not done as far as the grading goes. Uh, if you have any questions about how to do the PDF documentation, don't hesitate to come and ask a studio tech or one of your instructors.